Okay then, we've, uh, we've discussed the random sampling procedure. The next thing we have to figure out is how to get a representative sample out of the truck box. For our hot mix asphalt paving mixture, we're going to sample from the truck boxes. And the first thing we've got to look at is the loading procedure for these trucks. No matter what, when we drop material into a truck, we're going to have some segregation taking place. You can see in these examples that the finer material is going to stay near the center of the pile. The coarser material is going to roll further out to the edges of the pile, causing the segregation. We take a sample that's segregated. If we take it out here, we're going to have all the stone. If we take it back in the center, we're going to have nothing but fines. Neither one really represents the mix in the truck. A better option is to go with multiple dumps, where we drop a third of the load in the front, a third of the load near the tailgate, and the final dump drops in the center of the truck. You can see that what happened here is that we minimized the distance the material could roll, and then this material that did roll the furthest now got covered by fine material right in the center of the load. Once we've determined how we're loading those trucks and we're doing our best job we can to minimize that segregation, we're going to need to figure out how to take the sample from that truck. It's the contractor's responsibility to pull the sample from the truck insurance reasons and safety reasons just may not be evident to somebody coming out to collect a sample. Contractors, personnel should collect the sample. We're going to climb up into that truck, actually work in that hot mix inside the, uh, the truck. We could slip, we could fall. We've got to make sure we've got gloves, shoes that will stand the heat. And then we've got to have a proper, proper sampling device. And an example of that proper sampling device is this shovel. You can see that it's a flat-bottomed, flat-edged shovel, and the sides and back have been built up between two and three inches with solid metal, so that when we take that increment out of the, out of the truck box, the material's gonna, not gonna roll off the edges. We're not gonna segregate the material with the shovel. So we found the proper sampling device. We've loaded the truck as nearly perfectly as we can. Once that last batch has been dumped into the truck box, we need to look at that pile and pick out a reference point. In this case, we've dropped three loads or three drops into here. We've got a high spot. We're going to mark that high spot in the center of the load and pick out three increments, roughly equal distance between the high point and the side of the box. And we'll take an increment from each of those three points. When we do that, we'll take our sample, sampling shovel device and we'll scrape off the top two to three inches of that material. Then we'll take the shovel and drive it directly into the mix at that point. So we've got a full load on that shovel. Take one increment from each of those three points, combine it together into a bucket or a couple of buckets, however it is that you're going to have to be able to carry that, that material. If we're using a 12 and a half millimeter mix, we need at least 70 pounds. A 19 millimeter mix, we're going to have to go up to 100 pounds. And a 25 to 37 and a half millimeter mix, we're going to have to have 160 pounds. So it may be two to three five gallon steel buckets that you have to put this sample in to be able to get it out of the truck. The sizes again? For a nine and a half to 12 and a half millimeter, we need 70 pounds. For a 19 millimeter, we'll need 100 pounds. And for a 25 to a 37 and a half millimeter, we'll need 160 pounds. So that's the field size sample. That, when we break that down in the lab, they'll give us a retained portion and a tested portion. We're going to have to identify this sample. And again, the contractor is responsible for grabbing that sample out of the truck and splitting it down into a tested sample and a retained sample. So we're going to list on the label that we put on this bag or box, first of all, the contractor's name. Whether it's a QC sample, a QC retained sample, a quality verification sample, or a quality verification retained sample. We need the state project ID number, the date the sample was taken, the sample number, the type of asphaltic mixture, whether it be an E1 12 and a half or an E30 19 millimeter, we have to identify it that way. We also need the state verifica verification mix design number. That's that 250 number that you'll see, 
a four number digit and then the date or the year, 2012, 2013. We need to know the percent binder, the percent asphalt that was being added to the mix at the time we took the sample. We need the tonnage that it was sampled at and we need the current GSB. Just to go through a quick checklist on what we're doing there, if you're someone that comes out to do the, the sample and observe one being taken, if it's not a sample that you're asking to be taken at that time, you have to make sure that the sample is random. You want to look at the random number, how that was generated, and make sure that it's being taken at the tonnage that that random number would dictate. We want to observe that that sample was representative. We go back to that, that truck pile or that truck picture where we've got the segregation. We're watching somebody take a sample. We don't want to see them take it all out of the center, all fines, or all out of the coarse edge of the pile. Make sure that we're getting something that, that really represents what's there. Make sure that we've got 10 items on the identification of the sample, the paving contractor, the type of sample, whether it be QC or QV, state project ID number, the date of the sample, the type of asphaltic mixture, E1, E3, the nominal maximum size, if it's a 19 or 12 and a half millimeter, percent binder being added, the Wisconsin's DOT tracking number, that 250 number, the daily tonnage that it was sampled at, and the current specific gravity of the stone, the GSP. We need the full name of the sampler and the phone number that that person could be contacted at. Generally, we need to obtain a copy of the mixture loadout ticket that would represent that, that sample coming back as a QV. Make sure that we've got the minimum sample size. 9.5 to 12.5 millimeter, we need 70 pounds. 19 millimeter, we're going to need 100 pounds. 25 to 37.5 millimeter, we need 160 pounds. If a QV sample is being taken and the contractor is planning to take a QC sample, they need to be in two separate trucks. They can be consecutive trucks, but they need to be separate, separate loads. Okay, any questions about uh, sampling from a truck box? Correct. And you added, you want the technician's name on that also? That wouldn't have to be on the label. That should be collected by the person coming out to observe the sample. Okay, anything else? All right, you'll need to be able to demonstrate this and describe this on the exam that we're going to see later on. We'll talk about it in the lab some more. At this point, we're going to take a 70 pound sample of 12 and a half millimeter. We're going to move into the lab and our lab instructors are going to break that down for you into the sampling and testing.